Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn of Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. I'm going to answer a question that I get quite a bit, and that is, can you use cast iron cookware with an induction cooktop? And I'm going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. And by the way, this stuff works great on a flat top griddle. So check it out. I've never used an induction cooktop, so this is kind of new for me as well. So I went on Amazon and purchased this little uh, New Wave oven. And no, I'm not getting endorsed by a New Wave. I bought this myself. They have no idea I'm making the video. So I'm going to give this thing a shot. The reason why I got the New Wave is I believe this is one of the most common ones out there. They all work on the same principle. Some have a few more bells and whistles than others. So we're just going to use this one. It's pretty straightforward. One of the biggest concerns that I hear from people who ask about using cast iron cookware on an induction cooktop is will the bottom get too hot and will it cause it to warp? So I've got a couple of answers to that question as we go forward. So let me pull the camera down and we'll get started and check out what results we can come up with. So here is our new wave oven and it's a nice clean surface. You can clean it really well. That's one big advantage about it. I know it's not gas, but I'm, I'm telling you what, it cleans very easily. We have a low, medium low, medium, medium high, high, and max sear. So we have some choices to move on with. First of all, I'm gonna take one of my standard size skillets. Now this one right here is a Birmingham stove and range Century Series, and you can tell it's Century Series by the descriptive font. It actually has the uh, size markings in fractions, 10 and 5 eighths inch. This is a number eight. The Red Mountain Series would just have an eight and probably a letter for a mold mark. But this is a nice little pan. I haven't used it in a long time. There's probably a few specs on it. So we're starting off with a cold pan and a cold cooktop. So we're gonna put it right here in the middle. And this thing is pretty, pretty sturdy. So we're gonna start off with low and just get a feel for how soon the heat will come into it. I can hear the fan running. Immediately I can feel some heat coming into it. Not too hot where I can't stand it at this point, but it's getting there quickly. Okay, we'll go ahead and pause it and just see if the heat is coming up the edges. And I have this on low. This is pretty warm right here. Still feels nice and flat. Now when you heat one unevenly, they tend to want to spin a little. And I'm not feeling any heat come up through the edges yet. Still getting hotter. So we're going to go ahead and stop it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it set and let the heat kind of expand and work its way up into the sides so I don't hurt my pan. It's too hot to touch. I mean, I can touch it quickly, but I can't hold my hand there. My suggestion with this particular situation is if you want to make sure your pans don't overheat on the bottom and then still be cool on the edges, and that can actually cause warping and issues is I would just heat it up until it got really warm and just cut your cooktop off for a little bit until the heat kind of works its way and spreads out around the edges. Now I know it may take a few extra minutes to do that but I think it's better to be safe than sorry especially with a vintage piece. Now I'm feeling the heat around the edges. I think I would give it a few more minutes, maybe even start it again on low just to put a little more heat into the process so it will gradually work up around the edges. I think that's the best way. Well, I can feel some heat even getting into the handle now. So I think we're at a safe point where I can go ahead and crank this thing up to medium and see what it's going to do. A good rule of thumb is, is to go slow and easy and then crank the heat up in time. This in here has done really well. So I think we're ready to cook on this thing. Maybe throw some eggs in there or steak, but let's try something else. 
I've got another interesting piece. This is a Lady Bass number six skillet, and it's a Birmingham Stoven Range item. And you can tell by the font, the descriptive font. And this is from the Lady Bass series. This was uh, come out in the, I think, the 1976 for the Bicentennial. Now these originally came out with a wooden handle. These handles here came out kind of special. I think on the West Coast they really liked this style. So they come out with these special for a little while and then that was that. These are called Conbrio handles. Now these are kind of rare, hard to find. I only have one Conbrio handle. So when I want to take pictures of my other pans with a Conbrio handle, I just switch them out for the pictures. So here we go. We're going to start with low again. And see, we're getting good uh, connection. Starting to feel the heat. Now this is a thicker pan right here. When we remove the pan, it automatically goes off. So a thicker pan, so it's gonna take a little bit more time. I can feel it, my fingertips are getting warm. But an interesting thing The smaller pieces you can heat up upside down and get a nice even heat if you're worried about it. But I can tell you this, the smaller pieces are less likely to warp than the large ones. So this is working out really good. The whole thing is pretty, pretty much even. So it's going to work on this one here. The same thing with this one right here. This is one thing I was really, let me pull the camera up and we'll talk about this one. This one right here is really interesting. And the reason why I wanted to try that, this is called a Mercedes style. Recently documented that they were actually made by Birmingham Stove and Range. This is called the Mercedes style. Now for a long time, it was not proven that Birmingham Stove and Range made these. A lot of people believe they did, mainly because the size was exactly the same as the the size it corresponds. Everything is pretty much the same as the Birmingham Stove and Range except for the addition of these little lines right here. And what I believe that these lines were made for, there was a time when people went from cooking on the wood stoves or the coal stoves that had the stove eyes that was a plug basically sitting in the eye of the cooktop. And that was okay for, for a flat bottom or something with a uh, heat ring that, that actually fit inside the hole. And this would actually do that as well because it has a heat ring even though it is broken. So I believe the purpose of this was to make it easier to maneuver your pan, slide it around back and forth over those stove coils and not snag and get uneven. That's just my personal theory. But these didn't last very long and they kind of went away. I think Wagner done some like this, Griswold done some. And uh, it got popular for a little bit and it's kind of disappeared. So that's probably one reason why it took so long to prove that this was a Birmingham Stove and Range piece. In one of the Facebook groups, there was finally a post of pictures of some of these pans inside a box labeled Birmingham Stove and Range and had the size and everything described. So it was definitely Birmingham Stove and Range. Great new information. But back to what I was saying is we're going to stick this on here and see how well it works with it being raised above the level and just to see if it slows down the heating or not. So let me pull the camera down and we'll try this one out. So we're starting from a cold top and a cold pan. We're going to go on low again and hit start. already feeling the heat coming through and it feels like it's even. You would think it would be more in the lines where the lines are at. So where are the lines? One's right through here. I can't tell the difference. It's all hot. It's actually getting too hot to touch. Actually the entire piece is getting hot even, even up the sides. But that's great. We have a Birmingham Stove and Range number five enameled piece. This is a Century Series. Now, Birmingham Stove and Range did not enamel their cookware. They did enamel their stoves, but they sent the cookware off to a third party to be enameled. So, let's see what we got with this. We're going to start again with low. 
and see how quickly I'm feeling the heat already. You'd think the enamel would have a little bit of effect, but I suppose not. There we go. And uh, I'm getting some heat coming to the bottom. Not so much on the edges. I'm feeling a little bit of warmth on the edges. And again, if you wanted to heat up the edges and kind of give it even heat, you can do that with the smaller pans. I would say a number five and number six would work this way. A seven and larger, probably not. I really think this is going to be a nice little addition to my little studio. If I want to do something really quick and don't want to heat the room up, I think this would be great. I will say this, whenever you're using cast iron, especially the larger pieces, that you don't want them to warp, heat them up a little bit and let them set, heat them up a little more, let them set, come back and then crank it up and then go wide open. I think you'll be good once it gets heated around the upper edges so you don't have uneven extreme heat which actually has an effect on the pan and that's where you wind up with spinners and warped pieces and even cracked pieces so you want to be careful with especially with your vintage collector pieces those that are heirlooms that's been in your family for a hundred years or more so you know protect those be careful with them cherish them because they are very important i hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell and i promise i'll keep more coming and I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I would like to share something with you really quickly. In Psalms chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, it says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. I just want to say, share the word, and be a blessing.